Welcome back here to the start of the fourth, fourth period. Chill Howie set to check it in here. They lead the Patchcanary Rebels 46-31 with 7.57 to go here as we just got the ball checked in to number 20, Cameron Kessner. Looks like a foul on Zach DeBusk as he was going for the steal there after a bad pass attempt, but it's going to be called on DeBusk. That's his fourth. Team seventh, so he's going to go to the line here. Robinson, Tucker Robinson's going to go to the line. Here comes Jeremy White. Yeah, Jeremy White checks in for the first time today for the Rebels. So Robinson's going to have two free throws coming in here. First free throw is no good, rebounded by Cole Gregory. Gregory passes to Kent Kessner. It's a 15-point Chilhowee Warrior lead. Kent Kessner for three, wide open, no good, off the front of the rim, rebounded by number 20, Cameron Kessner. Kessner's going to get it here at the top of the key. He's going to dribble it out, throw it out to Hunter Delp. Delp looks at the three, passes it up out to Bailey Robertson. Robertson inside to Boardwine. Boardwine gets fouled on the inside. He misses the layup attempt as he tried to power through the contact there and make the layup. He wasn't able to. So Boardwine's going to go to the line here for two. Rebels now have eight fouls on the night. That was on number 44, Cole Greggy. That's his second. First free throw is no good. 46-31, the Warriors lead. Second free throw up and away by Boardwine. No good off the back of the glass. Long rebound. Going to be rebounded by Cole Greggy. What an effort play. It's going to go out of bounds, though, as he appeared to travel, but he didn't call it, and then he threw it over Coe's head. So, Chill Howie's going to get the ball here. Hunter Delp driving. Easy baseline passes. It gets blocked, though, by Cole Gregory. Cole Gregory gets off a defensive board, tried to pass it between the legs of Boardwine, gets the block on the other side, but they call a foul. So that's going to put Robinson back to the line as he was driving to the basket. Cole Gregory just put on a blocking show right there. I'm not sure if that last one was – seemed like the first block was more of a foul than the second one. Maybe so it Robinson, was a redemption call. Maybe they thought they should have called it on the first one. Robinson up to the line. He misses the first free throw. Graydon Williams checks in for Cole Gregory, who's played good tonight. Maybe not have the point total he usually has. He's averaging about nine a game since he's joined this varsity squad. He played JV for most of the season until the Rebels decided to go up tempo. That shot's missed. Rebounded, though, by Chill Howie. It's going to go out of bounds off of Graydon Williams, so the Warriors are going to get the ball back. 7.02 to go here in the fourth period. Warriors got the ball here on the inbounds. It's going to be number 20, Cameron Kester. Bounce pass to Boardwine. Boardwine's blocked by Williams. He recovers, though, puts a shot up, misses the first one, rebounds the second one, and puts it in. So Patrick Henry driving here as Kent Kester's getting double teamed. Kent Kester dribbles through the double team. No look pass to Carver. Carver, good post move, fouled on the inside by Boardwine. That's Derek Boardwine's second. Excuse me, that's his third. So it's going to put Carver to the line here, and it looks like Alex Delp is getting ready to check in for the Warriors. First free throw by Carver here is on the way. No good. Alex Delp checking in for Bailey Robertson. Stand up for a minute. Getting tired of sitting. Sitting can wear down a man, can it? Isaac Carver's second free throw is no good. It's going to be rebounded by Alex Delp. Chill Howie's driving down right here. Number 20, Cameron Kestner getting defended by Kent Kestner. Now Alex Delp drives, passes it out to number 30, Tyler Robinson. Missed, rebounded by Graydon Williams. Kent Kester tries to pull up and gets his pass stolen away as he was trying to get it inside to Isaac Carver. Stolen away by Hunter Delp. Warriors get it inside. It's going to be a foul call. Oh, it's going to be a travel on Derek Boardwine. So that's a turnover. That's a full timeout called right here by Patrick Henry. So Coach Lar Larimer is going to try to see what the Rebels can do here. They trail 48-31 here. The Rebels have nine team fouls to Chill Howie's four team fouls. 
So the Rebels trying to squeak their way back into this when they're going to have to start hitting some threes. But Dylan Coe has had a very quiet night. Before they can worry about hitting threes, they just need to hit a basket, period. Yeah, they've had a rough time here inside getting anything to go. Especially in transition. When the Rebels weren't able to hit a couple of those in transition in the early in the first quarter. So many it, sloppy passes. Yeah, turnovers have definitely been an issue. I'm glad you didn't have to keep up with turnovers tonight. So am I. <laughs> it's just been sort of a sloppy game for Patrick Henry. Compared to the way they played these – Warriors the last time he was expecting a pretty good matchup, especially since it was the third time they played. They're pretty familiar with each other. There's still six minutes left. Who knows? Yeah, six minutes and one second remain on the clock here in the fourth period as Warriors lead the Rebels 48-31. Just had to go and undercut me with that one second, didn't you? I did. I had to one-up you. So the Rebels are going to get it here as Jeremy White set to check it in. Kent Kester is getting trapped here. It's going to be a foul called on Hunter Delp. And that's going to be his first foul, team fifth. So the Rebels are going to get it in here. Kent Kester checks it, or excuse me, Jeremy White checks it into Graydon Williams. Williams driving near the out of bounds line. Jeremy White's pass gets blocked. Foul called on Alex Delp. That will be his first, team sixth. So the Rebels are really, there's only been nine seconds run off the clock, and the Rebels have chalked up two fouls on the Warriors. The next one will be free throws. They'll be in the bonus. Rebels have nine team fouls. The Warriors have six. Kent Kestner drops back for three. Good. It's 48-34 now. Kestner's really nailed that. Yeah, he did. Bailey Robertson outside here. Excuse me, Hunter Delp. It's Alex Delp. Alex Delp on the inside here. Jumper no good. Rebounded by number 22, Jordan Powers. Powers trying to get a post move. Can't do it. Hunter Delp driving the middle of the court. No good on the shot. Rebound by Justin Kessner. Good strong rebound. He throws it out to Dylan Coe. Coe overthrows Kessner as they were trying to get it on the fast break. And it goes out of bounds. Turnover on Patrick Henry. Sloppy again right there. Rebels got to stop, and what they do, turn it over. Story Just, of their life. Story of the night. Story <laughs> of the season. Yes. Turnovers have definitely been something that have plagued the Rebels from the beginning, but with that kind of youth, you've got to sort of expect it. You just hope it doesn't happen. In the ma in a m amount, it does happen. Yeah. Because once it starts, it's like a virus. Everybody starts turning it over. Hunter Delp here on the outside. He's defended by Kent Kessner. Miscommunication there. Kent Kessner steals it. Kessner dribbling. He's going to almost travel. They almost caught him for a travel there. Justin Kessner, I don't know who he was throwing it to. It's turned over. Here's Alex Delp driving. Baseline bounced off his knee. Dylan Cope made a good play there. Tried to steal it. Bounced it off Hunter Delp's knee. Reached in and tapped it off his knee. So it's going to be Rebel ball. There's been no offense because each team's turned the ball over about every time they've had the ball. Yeah, it's been a low-scoring game. Well, another steal here by Chill Howie in transition. Nobody's there. It's going to be a foul on Graydon Williams and one as number 20, Cameron Kessner, will go to the line to finish off a three-point play. That, that play right there pretty much exemplifies the night here for the Rebels. That was Graydon Williams. That foul was on Graydon Williams, excuse me, as he was – trying to stop that transition run now. That's his second foul, team 10th. First, that free throw is no good, rebounded by Justin Kestner. Isaac Carver has the ball out here for Patch Kennery. Here comes Kent Kestner around the corner, drop back, no shot taken though. Inside pass to Kestner. Kestner inside, no good on the shot. He gets his own rebound, though, and puts it up. Good shot there by Justin Kessner. It puts him on the board. Yeah, the Rebels trail 50-36 here with 4.13 to go in the fourth period. Alex McVay is tripped. Kent Kessner in transition. Easy lay-in. 50-38 here. It's a 12-point game. Let's see if the Rebels can keep something going here. They've cut it to 11 on a couple of occasions and given up points right back down on the other end. There's, out, there's Hunter Delp driving. He's going to throw it back out. Here's Boardwine inside. 
It's going to be a foul called on Cole Gregory, and Gregory went down hard right there, right on his back. And that's going to put Boardwine to the line, which Boardwine's shooting 50% from the free throw line tonight. So that's the third. That's actually the fourth foul on Cole Gregory. Boardwine banks the first one in. Looks like Bailey Robertson's going to check in for Alex Delp. Cole Gregory's off the floor now for the Rebels. And that's a timeout, full timeout called by Patrick Henry. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Dylan Hutton of the PH Sports Radio Network, and I have some huge news coming for the football fans of the district. Next football season, I'll be working with Hogahiggy.com to bring the district its first ever live-streamed pregame show. During Hogahiggy game day, we will talk about matchups, interview players and coaches, recap action from the previous week, and do special segments on the schools and towns of the Hogahiggy district. This is something we are all excited about starting, and we would like to have some sponsors to help us out. If you'd like to know more about this new show coming in the fall of 2014, email us at hogogameday at gmail.com. That is H-O-G-O gameday at gmail.com, all lowercase. Also like our new Facebook page by searching for Hogahiggy Game Day at the top of your Facebook screen. Now enjoy the rest of tonight's broadcast. All right, welcome back here as Derek Bordwine is shooting some free throws here for the Warriors. For second free throw is good. So 52-38 now the Warriors lead as Kent Kester drives it back up here for Patrick Henry. Kester acts like he's going to shoot a three. He's going to throw it out to Dylan Coe. Coe's going to get it inside to Graydon Williams. Good move. Misses it, though. Rebounded by Bailey Robertson. Robertson is going to try to throw it back still by Kent Kester. Kester lay in good. It's a 52-40 Chilhowee lead here with three minutes to go. There's Hunter Delp trying to drive baseline here. He's unable to as Graydon Williams stops him. Pass it over the head there of Cameron Kessner. And the Warriors are going to reset up here near the PH logo at midcourt. Here's Hunter Delp driving off a screen. That's a three taken by Cameron Kessner, and it's good. It's a 15-point game now with 2.58 to go here in the fourth period. That was a big shot there by Cameron Kessner. Here's Kent Kessner for three. No good off the front of the rim, rebounded by Hunter Delp. Bailey Robertson's going to have it down here. It's going to be a foul called on Graydon Williams. So it's 15-point game here as Bailey Robertson's going to go to the line. That is Graydon's third foul. And the team foul limit has already been reached. It doesn't go past 10 on the – at least they haven't been doing it. It doesn't matter. First free throw is no good by Bailey Robertson as Alonzo Brooks checks in for Kessner. Justin Kessner, that is. Too many Kessners out here. Yeah, there's a ton of Kessners. Kent Kessner now checks out as Zach DeBusk is on the floor for the Rebels. Yeah, we got two McVeighs, three Kessners, so it's been a a tough night for a play-by-play announcer. It's going to be a missed free throw there by Delp or Robin, Robertson I mean and it gets rebounded by Chill Howie and then the missed shot there on the other end so now the Rebels got it Dylan Coe has it another pass picked off stolen by Derek Boardwine I'm, I'm glad I want to see the stat for how many turnovers the Rebels have because that's literally that's been their killer when you think about all the turnovers they have that's a foul on Dylan Coe Still a 15-point game, 55-40. That's going to put number 20, Cameron Kessner, to the line. Timeout, Patrick Henry. See if he caught a full or 30-second. Caught a full, so we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Dylan Hutton of the PH Sports Radio Network, and I have some huge news coming for the football fans of the district. 
Next football season, I'll be working with Hogahigi.com to bring the district its first ever live streamed pregame show. During Hogahigi Game Day, we will talk about matchups, interview players and coaches, recap action from the previous week, and do special segments on the schools and towns of the Hogahigi district. This is something we are all excited about starting, and we would like to have some sponsors to help us out. If you'd like to know more about this new show coming in the fall of 2014, email us at hogogameday at gmail.com. That is H-O-G-O gameday at gmail.com, all lowercase. Also like our new Facebook page by searching for Hogahigi Game Day at the top of your Facebook screen. Now enjoy the rest of tonight's broadcast. Cameron Kessner set to finish off or set to start his free throws. He makes the first one, 16 point Chilhowie lead. Now 56 40 with 2.14 remaining here in the fourth period. While we got a little break in the action with the free throws, Chilhowie's upcoming schedule they go to Northwood January 28th to face off against the Panthers. Then they go January 31st to, Ma- to Marion, excuse me. Then they host Holston February 4th. Then they will host George with February 7th to close out the season on senior night. Rebels get it inside there to Graydon Williams. Missed shot. It's going to be a foul on Alonzo Brooks. And that's going to be what the wait took flashes. Actually, that's on Zach DeBusk. That's his fifth. He's fouled out. Kent Kessner comes in for Graydon Williams, and Cole Gregory is set to check in for. Isaac Carver. So on the floor for Patch Kennedy, Dylan. Well, no, they almost took. They were almost just playing with four. It's Dylan Cole on the. He's on the far end of the court there for the Rebels as they're just trying to get some offense started. And for the Rebels, they play tomorrow night an early game, 5:30 against Council. JV boys start about an hour and a half before them, so come out to Patrick Henry as they host Council. Then they play Marion at home January 28th. We'll be doing that game on here on Spreaker, so make sure you check that one. We'll do the girls' game starting at 5.50 p.m., so make sure you tune into that one January 28th as the Rebels host Marion. Then they go on the road to Twin Springs on the 29th. Then they will head to Withful to take on the Maroons at George with the 31st of January. Then they start off February 1st at Council on Saturday. They will travel back to Council after hosting them this week. February 4th, they will host Rural Retreat in the senior night game here, last game for Dylan Coe and Zach DeBust. So it be a special night for them. And not too long ago, Adam, you were experiencing senior night last yeah. year. I guess it's been about one year exactly. Yep. And then they will travel to Northwood to finish off the season February 7th. So make sure you... Check out the Rebels schedule. We'll be doing all the home games, of course, so make sure you tune in, especially with this cold weather. A lot of people don't want to come out and might want to listen to the broadcast. Kent Kessner for three. No good off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Cameron Kessner, 1.15 to go here in the fourth period. Easy points down here on the other end by Hunter Delp. And it's 62-40 now. Alonzo Brooks for three, no good. Rebounded by Bailey Robertson. Full court pass to Hunter McVeigh. It's going to be good too, easy layup. 64-40. Kent Kessner has the ball here, pull up three, no good. Air ball, 43 seconds to go in the game. So not what you wanted to see from the Rebels tonight, not very much offensive output. Dylan Coe definitely wasn't on his game tonight, which is something the Rebels really need. Only had three points tonight. Well, they still so got far. plenty of game, plenty of games left. Brady McVeigh, easy lay-in, missed, rebounded by McVeigh. Coach Snoggers is wanting them to throw it out here. They're wanting to, okay. They're just going to throw it out here and run the timeout. So it's going to be a foul on. They called they call it that? intentional. Well, they called it an intentional on Kent Kessner. Mm-hmm. Bailey Robertson hit the ground hard, but it didn't look like Kent need, mean any harm by that, but Bailey Robertson's going to the line regardless. So 29.6 seconds to go here. The Warriors are up 64-40. to 40. 
65-40 after the first make by Bailey Robertson. Make sure you hang around as we get these points totaled up and get the stats, and we'll go ahead and tell you about the next broadcast when it'll be coming up. So we've got 29 seconds to go. The Warriors are going to get the ball again after the intentional was called. And as for the Rebels, they host Mar or they host Council tomorrow. Won't be able to broadcast that one, but try to get up here if you can and watch the Rebels play at home against Council. 23 seconds to go here. Bailey Robertson holding it over his head. They're just going to kill the clock. So Chill Howie sweeps the Rebels here tonight. Girls Varsity gets their first win since 2009 here at Patrick Henry. And the Warriors continue to just dominate Patrick Henry over the past couple of years, maybe. But the Rebels have showed some promise this year against the Warriors, going up by 13 at Emory. Some stuff that people didn't expect the Rebels to do with that much youth. Time's going to hit zero at the end of the game. <laughs> We're going to go to a quick commercial break. Dylan Coe and Bailey Robertson down there messing around. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. We're going to get these stats added up. We'll be right back after this quick break. Hello, this is Dylan Hutton of the PH Sports Radio Network, and I have some huge news coming for the football fans of the district. Next football season, I'll be working with Hogahiggy.com to bring the district its first ever live-streamed pregame show. During Hogahiggy game day, we will talk about matchups, interview players and coaches, recap action from the previous week, and do special segments on the schools and towns of the Hokahiki District. This is something we are all excited about starting, and we would like to have some sponsors to help us out. If you'd like to know more about this new show coming in the fall of 2014, email us at hogogameday at gmail.com. That is H-O-G-O -O, gameday at gmail.com, all lowercase. Also like our new Facebook page by searching for Hogahiki Game Day at the top of your Facebook screen. Now enjoy the rest of tonight's broadcast. Hello, this is Dylan Hutton of the PH Sports Radio Network, and I have some huge news coming for the football fans of the district. Next football season, I'll be working with Hogahiggy.com to bring the district its first ever live-streamed pregame show. During Hogahiggy game day, we will talk about matchups, interview players and coaches, recap action from the previous week, and do special segments on the schools and towns of the Hogahiggy district. This is something we are all excited about starting, and we would like to have some sponsors to help us out. If you'd like to know more about this new show coming in the fall of 2014, email us at hogogameday at gmail.com. That is H-O-G-O -O, gameday at gmail.com, all lowercase. Also like our new Facebook page by searching for Hogahigi Game Day at the top of your Facebook screen. Now enjoy the rest of tonight's broadcast. Welcome back here as we get ready to do our little post-game show. We're not going to have too much time for a post-game show, but from tonight's action, the girls varsity lost, Patrick Henry's girls varsity lost to Chill Howie, 61-41. The boys just fell to the Warriors, 65-40. to So the Rebels look to their next game. Make sure you tune us in next Tuesday. The 28th, as the Rebels host Marion, will start our pregame show around 5.50. So make sure you tune that one in as the Lady Rebels look to get off this losing skid as they've lost two straight. Getting our point totals totaled up right now as we get ready to sum up tonight's broadcast. We'd like to thank you all for listening in. we still got some stat totals if you want to hear the stats from your Patrick Henry and Chilhowie Warrior players. Definitely something the Patrick County Warriors are going to, have to be worrying about, or Patrick County Rebels are going to, have to be worrying about, is turnovers over the next couple of weeks. They've went to this fast-paced offense, and it's really, it really helped them out at the start. But now they're just trying to rush a little bit too much and turning the ball over too much. So, let's we'll see if the Rebels do about that as they move into this next week. They got a couple of days of practice. Well, they got one day of practice to solve some errors in that regard and for the Lady Rebels getting back in motion on offense they're just out of sync right now so we'll have to see 
how they come out against Marion on Tuesday. So make sure you tune us in on that one. Those should be two pretty good games. Marion has played pretty well in the Hogahigi since they've joined. So it's been pretty exciting basketball. We're excited to have Marion in the district, especially on the football side of things where they bulk things up for us. But as far as the Rebels, future games for them. Well, we got our stats. Go ahead and give our stats, and then I'll give the future games for the Rebels. Go ahead. All right, Graydon Williams with four points, five rebounds, one steal. Isaac Carver with seven points, two rebounds. Dylan Coe, three points, one rebound. Zach DeBusk, five rebounds. Alonzo Brooks, two points, three reb rebounds, two steals. Kent Kessner, 14 points four rebounds and two steals. Anthony Powers with four points. Cole Gregory, four points, six rebounds. Justin Kessner, two points, seven rebounds. And for the Warriors, Bailey Robertson, seven points, seven rebounds. Ricky Martin with four rebounds. Cameron Kessner, 11 points, four rebounds, one steal. Jordan Powers, three points, one rebound, one steal. Brad McVeigh, five points, four rebounds. Alex Delp, five points, six rebounds. Hunter Delp, 14 points, 7 rebounds, 4 steals. Derek Bordwine with 6 points, 10 rebounds, 1 steal. Tucker Robinson, 8 points, 1 rebound, 1 steal. All right, and those are your stats for tonight's game. And for Patrick Henry tomorrow night, boys varsity and boys JV only against Council at 5.30, so come out for that one. Next broadcast is against Maine. Me and Adam Taylor will be back up here in the booth for the girls' game starting at 5.15. Thank you all for tuning in, and good night.